La 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 la! I can't hear you. I'm not listening. If you hadn't infected my suit, we wouldn't be stranded here in this forsaken. I object to the term infected. Some of my best friends are viruses. I prefer the term select. Get the hell out of my suit, you annoying little bug. That's Mr. Little Bug to you. And I would love to leave this rapidly ripening Robbie the Robot fat suit, Miss All Natural. But it appears that we are stuck with each other. Besides, there's nothing stopping you from leaving my suit. Actually, Arthur, that's not a bad idea. What are you doing? You took me serious. You're not supposed to do that. You'll be unprotected. Don't drink the water! Commander, I'm receiving a priority message from Frontier Outpost Helm. On main screen. The vessel has ignored all hailing attempts. All electronic systems were disrupted when it arrived. Our station is beginning to drift. Any symbiotry ships within this sector, please assist. Can we make it there in time? No, sir, we're too far. Scanners indicate that there's a large vessel next to the outpost. Wait. Commander, I'm detecting a huge displacement wave emanating from the space around the vessel. There are more ships appearing on the border. All systems are shorting out. Energy levels are up, escape! Outpost Helm, this is a science vessel Oracle. Please respond. Can you hear me? Helm, this is a science vessel Oracle. Please respond. Are you reading me? Please respond. Helm, this is a science vessel Oracle. Can you respond? Do you hear me? They have returned. And even 20 years later, it still gives me the shivers. Hello and welcome to the Dream and Project 3 Legacy of Time. You thought I forgot about this series, didn't you? No, no. I've been working on this on and off for the longest time, trying to get it working. And I've got something resembling a workaround that should work. Okay, it looks like our settings are all good there. So basically, I could not get this working for the life of me on my desktop computer where I normally do everything. Like it would play and everything, but the audio and video just wouldn't sync. Which for a full motion video, video game is kind of a little bit important for uh, the experience. And I tried and I tried and I tried. I got it working once and then promptly w was never able to get it working again. <laughs> it worked that one time and I didn't jump on and record that instant. Which, I mean, maybe that's for the best, because then I would have had one episode, and then I would have been back to where I started. So I guess we'll be a little more consistent with this, because it does work on my laptop. So right now, uh, I've got a curious little setup here where I'm actually re using OBS to record on my laptop, and then I'm running a separate recording on my desktop for my voiceover audio. So we'll see how this works. It's going to take a little more effort on my part to put together, but... Um, honestly, the weight's kind of a good thing because since I, um, 
because since I um, waited so long, I've now completely moved away from using Vegas Studio, which was basically resulting in me getting some really dark video for the other Journeyman Project games, which I'm a little ashamed of that I might go back and remaster those one day. But we should have some perfectly visible video for this game now that I'm getting more comfortable using the tools of DaVinci Studio. And I think it's just generally a bit of a brighter game too, so that should help. So, oh man, the thrilling conclusion, huh? So I guess without further ado, we'll start and I'll just kind of talk about things from there. I'm going to keep this episode a little bit on the briefer side because there's going to be some exposition dumping and um, just to make sure everything works out before I start doing some really long recordings with this. So for the second time, without further ado, let's begin. Remove the power cores. But, sir, you have your orders, Dalton. Hold it, Will. Agent Blackwood. The decree was just handed down from the Earth's world Senate. We can't just shut everything down. This is insanity. We have a responsibility to safeguard history, Commissioner. That responsibility has been revoked. All time travel operation has been suspended. Gage, this comes from higher up. What about Agent 3? She's still out there hiding in the stream. We already know what she's capable of. We can't shut down TSA with her at large. The Agent 3 case has been closed. There's no evidence she survived. We've scoured the time stream for a month and turned up nothing. She's gone, Gage. She knows exactly how we coordinate pursuit missions. With her training, she could easily be avoiding detection. We're making a tragic mistake, Jack. I have orders to deliver all jumpsuit cores to the World Senate. I will appeal there and fight this with all my influence. Until I settle this, I need you to uphold the suspension and take command of the TSA. Can I count on you, Gage? Yes, sir. have been confirmed to call the last have returned oh I, I should have told him more when he came now my people my planet are in terrible danger old friend I need you to do something for me Find peace at last. One thing I didn't tell you, Gage. You're gonna have to do the rest without me. <laughs> I'm the virus. Thanks for the adventure. I'll see you on the other side. What? What's going on? <laughs> What did you do? What did you do? What are you still doing here, Gage? I was hoping to jog some memories of this. It's strange. I don't remember anything of Arthur. 
It's not strange at all. You were mind wiped. Those synapses, those memories are gone. Those events had to be selectively erased. I know I shouldn't remember him, but I feel an absence I can't explain. When Agent 3 captured me, Arthur sacrificed himself to save my life. From these logs, I can tell we endured a lot together. I can't recall a single moment. That's it! She just hooked up the pipeline. I need it. I'm gonna swim up and see if I can stop her. Good, you're awake. Don't bother trying Gage, to you gotta see this. Got Fallon Prison. It was only ten years ago today that his plot to assassinate the Sirolan delegate during Earth's induction into the Symbiotry was thwarted by the heroics of Gage Blackwood, Agent 5 of the Temporal Security Agency. Sinclair will be remembered as both the greatest scientist of our time and as the greatest threat to Earth's history. Once again, Dr. Elliot Sinclair, the father of time travel, has died at Vega Thalon Prison. Not now! I've pinpointed the rip, origin Mediterranean 1262 BC. It's caused a... Gage. There's a temporal distortion wave heading towards the present and it's amplifying exponentially. Agent 3, she's finally made her move now. The TSA is completely crippled. Will, you have to install a new core for my suit. Commissioner Baldwin took all the cores. We don't have time to construct a new one. There must be something. What about reactivating the Pegasus device? That old time machine? Not a chance. It's been shelled for years. Gage, we're suspended. We don't have many options. Forget the suspension, Will. That wave will rewrite history. There must be a way to stop it. something from me. Damn it, Will. Tell me how to go back while there's still time. There's one very dangerous possibility. Follow me. I'm not supposed to show this, even to you. But under the circumstances, well, here it is. The Chameleon Jumpsuit. keeping a secret from me. I began working on the prototype about a year ago. It utilizes holo technology, allowing an agent to assume any virtual disguise in its database. It was intended for your deep time research unit. If someone performed a stream dive with it. Well, you'd be the first, but I suppose that's nothing new. Gage, if you go, Commissioner Baldwin may never grant you another command again, or, or worse. Baldwin knows it's my job to preserve history, Will. He'll understand. If he doesn't, then I guess I'll be cellmates with Agent 3 when I get back. All right. There's no time for a full diagnostic, but I need to see if the chameleon system works. You should now see a display within your helmet. Move your cursor over me. Use it to capture my image. Hurry. Good. Now my image is in your image database. Remember, you can only assume a form that is native to a time zone, which means you'll have to capture someone else's form when you're in the past. Also, you'll need to know how to initiate a temporal jump. Uh, there's a display at the top of the helmet that shows the date and the current time zone. Activate that and choose a location. You should only have one, the source of the distortion wave at 1262 BC. That's it. The rest is up to you. Good luck, Gage. Alright, so now that we're back in gameplay, you'll notice we have our trusty translator biochip over here. And, uh... 
there's a lot to talk about. So obviously, uh, I think the manual gave an exact date, but this is roughly about a month after the events of the Dream and Project 2 buried in time. So this and biotree technology dis discussions have likely been ongoing regarding the use of time travel. Uh, we've looked for Agent 3 and Arthur and have found nothing. Gage is mind wiped, so he doesn't remember anything of buried in time, at least not from our perspective. He just remembers being in jail, I think. And he obviously does not care much for Agent 3 since she betrayed him. And th we saw they were very good friends after the events of Pegasus Prime up until Buried in Time. So, yeah, they took all the technology cores because Earth was going to probably suspend it as like a good faith. They're like, oh, we'll suspend it while negotiations go on, just as like a good faith measure. Um, but fortunately, we still had one working time suit that he didn't confiscate the core for. And now we are in this unknown city. And we need to find the cause of the temporal distortion. So you'll notice we have a 360 degree panoramic camera, which is a big step up from the original games and their fixed angles. We still have fixed, like, I guess you could call them hot spots that we have to work from. Like, you can see here Ooh, barnacles how nice like we can't just walk wherever we have to follow the fixed path still but it's still a great step up from what we had and if we wanted to we could go back down i don't know why you would want to and another neat feature is you could kind of emulate this in the other games but if you click and hold when you see this double arrow it'll just keep walking until you uh can't walk anymore Aha! Agent 3, we have you. Surrender at once. Gage, remember the smooth, sultry voice? It's me, Arthur! The Robin to your Batman, the Jekyll to your... Uh, heckle, the thing to your thing. Why the long face? You remember me, right? Dimples! Remember the... Oh, from your blank stare, I would say that you don't. Oh well, I'm not hurt. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a look around and make myself at home. Uh, uh, while I'm checking things out, I have a message from your pen pal. Agent 3? Yes, Miss Joy. She left it for whoever found the suit. My jumpsuit's the cause of the distortion wave. Once Arthur sends it to the TSA, the crisis will be over. I know everyone believes I'm a traitor, and I can't change that now. But what I have discovered is so incredible that I'm willing to turn myself in. But I can't risk being imprisoned before my discovery is investigated. So, you will follow my trail and see what I have seen. I have hidden three pieces of a time code that will lead you right to me. The first code piece is hidden in this environment, not far from here. Arthur has the coordinates for the other two time zones. You will soon figure out why I placed the codes where I did. In two of the environments, you want to go to the highest vantage point, but in the other, go to the lowest. I implore you, keep your eyes and your mind open, and remember that your first duty is to history. The good news is, I know why you don't know me. The bad news is, you were mind wiped. Two months ago, you were taken from the past to help save your neck in the future. Together, we stopped Agent 3's plot to frame you. But I got zapped into the time stream with her in the process. Once your name was cleared, the TSA sent you back to your own time without any memory of the adventure, so you don't remember me. But we're back now. Together, we'll find Agent 3 and bring her back alive. Oh, this will be more exciting than a pair of pants full of geckos. Just like before, I'll display icons for you to talk with me. If I have a comment, the thought icon will illuminate. If you want my sage advice, check the light bulb and see if I have any help. Oh, and I took the liberty of moving into the old translator biochip. So, I'll be your universal translator now. The new coordinates are in your jump menu. Lead on, Gage. So you'll notice that 
There's a lot of streamlining going on. Arthur is our translator and our help, for instance, as well as our commentary. The old biochip menu is gone and done with. Um, so we just have our inventory, Arthur, and our disguises. And as a result, the uh, view window is probably about four times as big as it used to be. So, yeah, this is the downside of some of this panoramic stuff. As you can see where the textures can get a little weird on certain angles and such. But yeah, we have Arthur back. The whole family is back together, minus Agent 3. And, well, Dr. Sinclair, unfortunately. But, as you'll notice uh, in the opening cutscene, he did die in Vega Fallon. According to history, this uncharted island never existed. However, we are relatively close to Thera, an island that erupted in a huge volcanic explosion a few hundred years ago. The crater it left became the island of Santorini. The destruction of Thera had far-reaching consequences. From about 1950 to 1450 BC, the Minoans of Crete ruled the Mediterranean during the golden age of their civilization. When Thera erupted around 1450 BC, volcanic ash from 70 miles away covered Crete, while tidal waves flooded the island cities, wiping out the great Minoan nation. It was later proposed by archaeologists that the lost continent of Atlantis could have shared the same fate. All right, so let's explore around a bit more. We see there we could go right into the uh, the windmill here, but we'll probably wait on that a little bit. That building was not dilapidated from natural erosion. I would say that it looks freshly smashed. Hmm. Who would have it in for a windmill? And unlike the previous games, there's also no scoring system either. So you are free to use hints to your heart's content. I probably won't use most of them uh, just because I don't need them. I basically have this game memorized. Um, but I'll probably play a few just for the sake of playing them out because some of them are pretty funny. Uh, if you want to see all of them, I recommend, as usual, Ryland's playthrough because he goes through every single hint there is, as well as pretty much every single common by taking the least optimal path of doing things, whereas I'll probably be doing one of the, maybe not the most optimal, but one of the more optimal paths. Don't look now, but that broken windmill is staring you down. You're no Don Quixote, but I think you can take it. I have a hunch that what we're looking for is somewhere in this windmill. Let's go through that gaping hole. Yeah, so basically the windmill is the tallest thing standing around on this island. So that's probably where our our um, time code is going to be. It is the highest point, and she said two would be at the highest location. And I get the feeling most of the city is going to be inaccessible to us unless we swim, which is uh, not something we really do much in any of these games. Uh, I mean, we walked underwater and buried in time, but that was about it. I suppose we took a submarine in uh, uh, Pegasus Prime, but we don't have a submarine here. Before I uh, cleverly ditched that annoying Agent 3, I did see some of this island. I recognize that windmill. Maybe if we explore more, we can figure out what the dickens is going on. Agent 3 said two of the time codes would be found at locations with high vantage points. Well, that windmill is the tallest thing still standing around here. Yeah, we can see there's an eclipse about to happen. That derelict boat seems to be in a hurry to leave the island. Hold on, there's somebody on that boat. He looks familiar. Call me Time Space Happy, but I swear that's Dr. Elliot Sinclair. The scientist who invented time travel. The guy you put away for 10 to 20 at Vega Thalon. He could be Sinclair's distant cousin. And you know what that means. Baldness is hereditary. Well, that certainly adds to uh, the suspicious nature of what's going on around here. You can almost make out some of the buildings. Oh, this We'll see where this, actually the neat thing is, we'll see where some of these items were earlier. 
But uh, that is a rope ladder. That rope ladder is like one of your modern ladders in many respects, only more rope-like. And this is where I'll play some of the hints, because it's, it's funny, because the game is basically branding you an idiot. That's not Driftwood. It does look like it once belonged on that ship out there. It appears to be in pretty good shape. I think the rope ladder would go very well with your inventory. What? You're going to leave the owner a note? You're on a deserted island! Gage, take the rope! <laughs> and, uh, so we can also get, if it works, oh, it does work. I've had bugs where it hasn't worked in the past. Oh, yeah, you see some flickering there. Object analysis item, rope ladder. Date found, 6th of October, 1262 BC. Location, Mediterranean Sea. Made from thick twine, the rope ladder is composed of a series of hoops that allow foot and handholds for climbing. All right, well, that seems to be all we can do from outside the windmill. As you can see, we can't go any further. Apologies if spinning around makes anyone motion sick. That is definitely the danger with this, uh, with this style of game, as advanced as it is. So let's go back to that windmill. As you'll notice, yeah, we apparently can't climb up through the through the little hill on the side or anything like that. We could go back to, I suppose we could go back to where we start. I've never really done that with Arthur, so we can see if he has any more dialogue from down here. This is probably about as low as we can get. But, um, uh, yeah. I don't think Arthur's going to give us any more dialogue from here. Which is fine. That's expected. I would have been more surprised if he did have dialogue for going back there, but this is supposed to be kind of a tutorial level. That's another thing we'll get into later, but there's uh, no deaths in this game either. Clean up file two. So this game is a fair bit easier than the previous titles, which I'm a little disappointed in. I really like the depths because they put a lot of effort into them, especially like the art. So having that taken away makes me a little bit sad, actually, even if it does make the game easier and more accessible to newcomers. If we overcome these stairs, we could get to the top of the windmill and have a nice view of this entire island. But I don't see any other way to go up other than those broken stairs. Maybe if I threw your legs over that bottom step and climbed up your spine? God, I wish I had a body. So yeah, the, the uh, whatever impact hit this windmill perfectly took out the, uh, the stairs. We could go around in circles, I guess. Whee! Circles, they're fun. This brings you back there though. But we do have a rope ladder, which might allow us to ascend. Uh-oh. Oh no, the stairs are wasted. My parents are gonna be pissed. Uh, obviously, we can't really see it, but it's pretty, I think it's pretty obvious that I think that's a rope ladder there and that bottom step probably broke off. Uh, so we won't be going back down. This is a point of no return, but to get here, you had everything you needed. So it's not a huge loss. Oh, there we go. The technology that drives this windmill is at least two centuries before its time. From what I can tell, power generated by the central shaft gets transferred to that diagonal shaft, leading me to believe that this windmill is actually a wind pump designed to move water. Why, I don't know. Another mystery, an island with technology ahead of its time, but also mysteriously missing an Earth records. Well, let's get up top and uh, see if we can't 
get a good look at what's going on. Oh, there we go. No! Oh, you lied to me, game. The arrows were up. Uh, let's see if he get... Okay, that must be... No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, he gives some dialogue about that door, but I guess it's, uh, when we come back to this area. And we will come back. Sorry if that spoils anyone, but... So we got a kind of a decent view, but uh like we're high up, but obviously our view is occluded by the windmill for the most part. Well this actually uses a slightly different model, I think. Because there should be a spot for some gears there, but uh not here. Oh, you know what? I think I was thinking of this door. This island isn't deserted. It's been attacked. Something destroyed the city's seawalls and flooded it. I doubt she would have written the code into anything permanent. She probably would have traced it in sand, dirt, maybe even human blood. A message she knew would not stay permanently. Keep looking. I'm sure it's right under your nose. Yeah, okay. It's going to be when we come back. But yeah, we can see there's definitely a couple breaks in the seawalls there. And there's a fair amount of these wind pumps. Yeah, it doesn't let you move around up here either. And there's a few wind pumps dotting the walls. So they must have used the wind pumps to keep water out of the city. Probably to make room for like land and stuff, but... We'll find out more later. It seems like the only building standing is what would have been in the center of the city. And it looks like that eclipse is getting pretty close to uh, filling up there. And this is the time code Agent 3 mentioned. That Sirolan ship completely leveled that building. But the Sirolans are supposed to be the good guys. The founders of the Symbiotry. Why would our allies attack? We need to get to the bottom of this. Let me check out the time code. The time code you found is one third of a temporal coordinate. With the other two pieces, I can triangulate Agent 3's location. Well, you found one of the codes. I assume I have your interest peaked. Now, find the other pieces. There's still much more to see. The nerve of her. Coming in here, taking over my space. Next thing you know, she'll be cleaning up my workbench. All right, so we get a little more dialogue from Arthur. We're in a null time pocket gauge. If this place was a verb, it would be regurgitate. Agent 3 and I discovered it when we were thrown into the time stream. Not a terribly exciting place to honeymoon, but I figured it was safer than where we just were. So I think this is actually similar to basically the space that you store your items in, because I believe if you go back to Pegasus Prime or Buried in Time, they do make mention of some sort of time pocket that you hold your stuff in. So in this way, they basically are frozen in time and don't uh, take up any space because they're in like an alternate dimension. They're they're like in um kind of like a bag of holding, <laughs> essentially a high tech bag of holding. Gage, I think you're good for about nine hundred more flushes. Gage, help! We're trapped inside your screensaver. 
it is pretty reminiscent of those early 2000s screensavers. And I think that's where we'll end for today. There's obviously a lot of questions. Why did the Sirolans attack that? We can at least conclude the temporal distortion wave was probably caused by the Sirolans finding Agent 3's time suit, which would explain why uh, they were amplifying exponentially. Um, but yeah, why were the Sirolans blowing up our cities? What city was that? And we see we do have two new time zones loaded into our uh, jump bio chip. We have 8524 January 29th, Andes Mountains, and 801219 April 15th, Himalaya Mountains. But I think we'll visit those next time. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there. And we'll see you then.